Hello there and welcome along. Today's rose is another one launched by David Austin Roses and brought to you as an online exclusive just last year. Launched at the Chelsea Flower Show and as an online exclusive here on the Gardener Ben account, I had the pleasure of bringing you my first impressions of this new release for 2023 last year. This fabulous new addition to the David Austin collections is Donahue. I say launched at the Chelsea Flower Show and named after Danny Clark, who is known as the Black Gardener on Instagram. This is an absolute cracker. If you're looking for more media about this with regards to this rose, with the whole rose in front of me, please do look out my first impressions on this particular rose that was published to all media channels, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, this time last year. So if you want to see the entire plant, please do have a look at that particular video. But during my full, full, full personal review, we're going to go through this rose's attributes and qualities in a little more detail up close with the camera. I say launched in 2023, this is a fabulous rose, reaching quite a large size. David Austin are publishing this one reaching around four feet by four feet. I'm gonna say this one is gonna get a little bit larger than that, and I'm almost gonna say that I would be inclined to give this one quite a lot of support. I think this one's gonna to run to more like about five and a half feet, maybe onto six feet, which is not a bad thing. Uh, I'm gonna to have to give it a little bit of support, and I might actually next year try growing this one as a short climber, maybe giving it an obelisk or some sort of support to climb up like that, because it is going to get quite large. Another full package rose from the David Austin breeding program, giving you an amazing rose with lots of lovely attributes, starting with its amazing disease resistance. This particular rose marching its way all the way through last year. 2023 was a really bad year for all sorts of mold, mildew, black spot in the garden. This particular rose unscathed by all of those things. I've got mine growing in a really large container. I haven't scrimped on the size of the container whatsoever. So David Austin is saying this particular plant is going to reach in excess of four feet by four feet. That means it's going to need an incredibly large pot. It's in a container around 60 centimetres in diameter and around 75 centimetres in depth. And as published, David Austin say this one is a great rose for shade. And I cannot recommend this enough for a shady spot in the garden. If you're used to growing the likes of um, Imogen or the Crown Princess Margarita in a shady spot in the garden, this particular rose planted here at North Lodge only gets around two to four hours of direct sunlight per day. And after producing three rounds of flowers from last May, it was still in flower with a smattering of blooms right into the very beginning parts of December. When the light levels were really really low and there was no light about at all this rose was still working really hard so I can't recommend this one for a shady spot enough it does work really really well as I mentioned, a full package rose bringing together lots of lovely attributes, not only this stunning rich apricot colour which fades out to a heavy cream as the bloom ages, but also the most amazing foliage and I've got a leaf just off to my right here that I'm going to show you. Look at the size of this! This is the reason this particular rose does really well in shade. Look at the size of these leaves. I'll put my, I mean, I've got really, really large hands, but this rose producing some really, really large foliage. At the very beginning of the year, this particular rose, I'm going to actually upload some pictures of this particular rose in different stages, including its foliage uh, with the set of stills that will come along with this particular review. The foliage, when it first emerges at the very beginning of the year, is the most amazing scarlet, burnt red colour. It fades out over time to have an apricot tinge to it. But every time the plant obviously marches forward, whether it's growing or to produce a flush of flowers, the entire bush will change colour. And I said during my personal uh, um, first impressions last year, the whole bush taking on a lovely apricot sheen as it marches forward to flowering. You can tell that's caused by hormone levels uh, actually rising and changing in the plant. But the foliage is absolutely stunning. You can tell it's really, really quite thick and actually quite tough. It is quite heavily barbed, so do be careful. Along the back of the actual leaf stems themselves, there is some barbing. The plant, as a general rule, is very thorny, but I say with an awful lot of these roses that are harboring a really good fragrance rating unfortunately it does go hand in hand with a few thorns starting its show in the early parts of june this plant as they marched forward with wave after wave of flower producing three consecutive repeat blooms last season i'm hoping that now it's establishing its pot is actually going to produce four but it produced a smattering of blooms all the way back into the very very end of november into the very beginning of december which is very unusual this particular plant also 
produces some really nice colored buds. If I bring this one out and show you as well, it's a really deep, rich apricot color tinged with flashes of orange up the side of the bud itself, opening to a really beautiful, now this one is particularly blown in that light, or sorry, dark coffee color, which I described just a second ago, a really low, loose, open cupped bowl made up of row upon row of lovely, heart-shaped or bunny-eared shaped petals with a lovely resplendent collection of glowing stamens in the center. This particular rose absolutely loved by pollinators. The really large queen bumblebees love to get in here and really make a fuss when they're in the center of the flower. There's plenty of room for a flying pollinator to get in there and enjoy that, stame, that collection of stamens in the center. When it first opens, the, the flower is very similar to that of Jude the Obscure or Woolerton Old Hall. It's very, very deeply cupped and cabbage-like in its appearance. And then it slowly opens to expose that loose bowl in the very center. It opens a rich, radiant apricot color, which simply admits color from the flower itself. Very much like the iridescent sheen that is emitted from, flat, from uh, plants in the collection like Scarborough Fair and by Buttercup. It simply radiates color from the flower. So even in poor light levels, it really does pack a punch with a smattering of blooms on it. it really it is very pleasant. If I blow that one out a bit, you'll see there's also tinges of pink and apricot running up the back of the flower. It really is very, very attractive indeed. It is fairly floppy. As I say, I've given mine quite a lot of support and it does have quite a few thorns. So if you're going to pick this one and bring this into the house, please do be very careful how you actually handle it. The barbs are very, very sharp and very, very pointy. Uh, so yes, it is a little bit difficult to handle. Uh, it will, I say, grow really well in deep shade, um, receiving between two and four hours of sunlight a day and still performing really well. This particular plant with myself is going to receive a seven star out of 10 fragrance rating, which is really quite good indeed. The fragrance, let's open this one up and let's have a go on this one. The fragrance is rich and it's warm. It's hybrid tea based and very, very green. So you've got notes of green tea, uh, you've got notes of citrus, and more importantly, you've got notes of grapefruit, which make it really, really quite interesting. So receiving a seven star fragrance rating for myself, a little bit behind uh, last year's edition of Penelope Lively and this year's edition of Emma Bridgewater. But Donahue from David Austin Roses launched in 2023 is a fabulous uh, all package rose, uh, which is great for growing in a pot or as a large statement shrub in the ground. But most importantly, really, really good for growing in deep shade conditions where you really want to pack a punch. Expect this rose along with Penelope Lively to climb high into my top recommended top 20 roses at the end of the month as I correlate that new recommended list. But this is Donahue from David Austin Roses, a really fabulous rose, which I hope you add to your collection soon.